In this video, we will be covering config parser. Config parser is commonly used with Python applications to configure application settings. It is included as a core package in Python, and it's common to have multiple files or to create multiple files dynamically. This could be done based on the operating system or just a different environment. Um, it just depends on your application. So what we'll be doing in this tutorial is using config parser to dynamically create a configuration file. So we need to go ahead and import config parser. And once we do that, um, we need to set up a new config variable. Config files are generally divided into sections. And within each section, we could have multiple options. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a few um, sections here. Okay, so now we have three different sections set up. We have a section for settings, one for the database, and one for the files. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and create a configuration file. So using our context manager, we're going to open a new file. And we'll just call this dev.ini. And we'll set the mode to write. So we need to call config.write and then pass in F. If I save that and open a terminal, and I just move that down toward the bottom of the screen here. Okay, and then if you notice over here, we got a new file called dev.ini. And let's just move that up to the top. And so this is our output. We have our three sections, and then we have the options and the corresponding value in every single one of those. Now at this point we can create something that's going to read from this file. So let's create another file. We'll call this config file read. And just like in the create file, we need to import config parser. And set up a parser variable. Now we need to pass in our file in order to read from it. And now that we've done this, we have various methods that are available to us now. We can go ahead and print out the sections. And we save that and run it. And then we get a list back of our three sections, our settings, database, and files, which is the heading to each one of these. Now if we want to get an option within a single section, uh, we can do that also. So we need to call the get method. And so let's look inside of settings and then get the secret key. And then if we run that again, um, we got our ABC123, which is our secret key over here. And if we just want to see what the options are, we can do that also. Actually, what we need to do is pass in a section. So we want all the options within the settings section, uh, which uh, gives us debug secret key and log path, which is what we had set up over here. We can also use the in method to see if a section is in the file. So if I say db uh, in parser, uh, so that should return true, uh, which it does, because db is in one of these sections here. Now it's important to note that we have certain values, like for our database port, we have 8889. It looks like it's an integer value, but the way that this is processed, it's always going to be a string. If I try to get that in the DB port, and then if I were to take this and check the type, uh, so we'll see what we have. Here's our value of 8889, and it 
is returning a type of string. Now we could do something like this. We can grab this again and simply convert it to an integer. And that would indeed work. However, uh, there is a better way. So some of the methods that the parser, the config parser gives us, One of them includes the get int method. If we were to print that out, um, that is going to give us an actual, it's actually going to be an integer uh, from just by calling the get int method. It's going to do the type conversion for us. And we could also do the same thing with a default fallback. Let's say we want the default to be 3306. And obviously we are setting a value, so we're not getting that. But if we were to have another value that's, or an option that's not in there, and rerun that. So DB default port is not set in anywhere in here. So it's going to use the fallback. And so that's good if you're processing a bunch of these and you don't know if every setting is going to be set. Um, that way you have a fallback as a, having good defaults is, will help you a lot with this. And we can do the same thing for booleans. And so one thing that we did have a boolean value was, was for um, the debug mode or the debug option. And that gives us a value of true. And if you notice in the file, um, what we had uh, was a lowercase true, and then we had set that using a string value. Now, so this works for anything that is deemed uh, truthy or falsy. So the true values would have been true. We could have passed the number one. We could have also passed the other words, including yes and the word on. Now, the false values would just be the opposite of those. We could have passed the word off, and that would be indicative of a false uh, value. So it's quite flexible in how it, it's able to handle those. So the final thing to cover is using string interpolation. So we can take the values from one section in the settings and apply them to another. So we're going to go back to our original create script and we're going to add a couple more values. And let's add Python version. And we'll just set that to three. And then we'll add one more in this section. Uh, packages path. And let's go ahead and set that to user local. And then so we can take that value and then use it down here. So we're going to use that in our set the Python path. And string interpolation, what we're going to need is the uh, dollar sign and opening bracket in brackets. So we're going to use the settings section and then the packages path. And so we're going to append to that bin slash local, I'm sorry, bin slash Python. And so we're going to need one more item. We're going to need the Python version and let's just grab settings Python version. And that will give us our value. Now, if we come over here and try to run that and print that out, and I'll just enter that in here first. So we're going to get from files the Python path. Actually, we need to generate a new file. Let's go ahead and do that first. And let's just look to make sure that that got updated. And we can see our new values are here and then our uh, values that's going to substitute the path for the real path is um, in this section right here. If we were to run this, we would have a slight problem. It would not know to substitute these values. Let's just go ahead and do that really quick. So our output right here is um, exactly the exact string that we gave it. 
So what we need to do is we need to uh, import extended interpolation. And then when we set up the config parser, the init method, we need to pass that in. And there is an interpolation keyword value or keyword argument. And we'll just pass in the extended interpolation class. So if we go ahead and rerun this, it should now work. Actually, this is, needs to be a method call. Uh, let's try and rerun that. Okay, so there was a mistake in our file. This is supposed to be a colon. So let's go back here and fix our uh, create. So we need to run the create one again, just to generate a new file. And then now we can run read. And that gives us our um, actual path um, that we had called from the file section. And we can see our Python path, the values were properly substituted. So this has been an overview on how to use the config parser. Thank you for watching.